The IGT's Race to Q School Series is heating up and this week event number 5 is held at Centurion Country Club and hosted by the Pro Squad Academy. The beautifully designed course should be a tough challenge for all the golfers that are teeing it up this week. Here to tell us a little bit about the course and what holes are going to be key this week is General Manager Hans Jonk. Now we're quite privileged hosting the, the IGT Tour here once again. I must be honest, I think it's a big attraction point for the players to come and play at Centurion. It's halfway between Johannesburg and Pretoria. We always get a big amount of fields at Centurion and we're looking forward to hosting the last tournament before going into the qualifying school. Number 9, which is I think it's our signature, our famous old where you can hit iron of the tee on the green, but surrounded by water all the way around. It's making it a very tough one. It's been a one-man show during the first two rounds as last week's winner in Race to Q School Series standout Brian Andrew Rulofs so with the final round four shots clear of his nearest competitor. Rudolphs and the rest of the chasing pack will not have an easy final round as the wind picked up early aboard with it a very cold chill over the Centurion area. Before we catch up to some on-course action, we decided to showcase some of the important people who might not get as much credit as the players do. Uh, Kelly's very important to me because I tend to become very emotional on the golf course. He really, he, he lets me take a step back and think about things and how. Yeah. I just tend to have a clear mind when I got him around. Yeah, I'll try, I'm trying to create him little bit by little bit because sometimes uh, we don't wake up in the same day, so you know, left and right and uh, left and hands and right and hands. So we're trying our best to, to communicate and give him a going forward ahead all the time. You know, it's not too bad. It's enjoyable and a bit of fun and it's just a good experience to learn from, you know, from the guys that are playing out here and obviously just giving a little bit of my expertise yeah. It is very important, I mean, uh, club selection, some of the lines, if I'm a little bit unsure, I can ask him, he can help me out. Like the previous hole, a little bit unsure of the line, gave me a good read, ended up saving a good part, which I know is definitely important when it comes to club selection in the wind. Down the fairway comes walking Roswell Sinclair. The tiring teenager is hard to miss, but his card seems to be pushing itself. With close inspection, a little head starts appearing behind the push cart. That head belongs to a nine-year-old, Ivan Faster. Ik draag voor als als een keer en is nog als baie lekker. Zo net op die keer van hy wil luister, dan sal het nog beter weer. Ja, ik vat net op die keer vir keer een stok en ja, dan sal hom in die water of so. Ja, yesterday on uh, the back nine, he gave me a few, what's it, uh, good club decisions and I uh, didn't listen to him, so it uh, didn't work out, but today I'm going to listen to him and see if it goes better. Before the turn was reached, Rulof's lead was but gone as IGT standout Angel Arnaldi carded five birdies in a row and roared to the front of the pack after seven holes. Arnaldi's three putted the eighth and after his approach found the water on the ninth, he found himself in a two-way tide for the lead entering the final nine with Rulof's. Arnaldi wasn't the only one putting pressure on the overnight leader. Dean O'Reilly, who featured in both the Pekinwood and Ramsdag events, turned up the heat with a front nine 35 and birdies on 10 and 11. As the two leaders stood on the 10th tee box, they quickly realized that all of a sudden, it wasn't a two-horse race anymore. They kept their composure and both Rulofs and Arnaldi secured their birdies by reaching the green on the par 5 10th. This put them at 7 under and one shot ahead of O'Reilly. O'Reilly wasn't giving up and in the par 4 12th had a difficult approach after his tee shot found the right rough. The magician pulled one out of his hat and hit a miraculous shot to 4 feet and had a birdie putt to join the leaders at 7 under. He couldn't convert, but while everybody thought he missed his chance to challenge the lead, Dean, never one to give up, stuck it to 10 feet on the par 4 13th and had this putt for birdie. The putt never looked like missing and after making the putt, we asked Dean how he feels about his chances going into the final four holes. Not much, uh, I'm just trying to stay focused, just play each hole or each shot at a time. Hopefully make one or two more going home and We'll just have to wait and see what the guys behind me do. Hopefully two more will get me the win. But yeah, just going to keep having fun and enjoying it and see what happens. In the final group, Arnaldo and Rulofs were found scrambling for their pars in the first couple of holes of the final nine. Birdies were hard to come and entering the final four holes, Rulofs, Arnaldi and O'Reilly were tied at seven under. The 15th proved to be a pivotal hole in the tournament. O'Reilly in the group ahead secured his par by hitting a great approach shot and narrowly missing a mid-range birdie putt. Rulofs hitting three from the fairway had to punch out and found himself having to hole out from the bunker for par. After a poor fourth, he knocked the ball around the green and finally tapped in for a devastating seven. His chances of a back-to-back -back victory disappearing in a matter of minutes, he would fall off the leaderboard with a final round 81. 
O'Reilly, who started the day five shot back, had his first lead of the tournament and was one shot ahead entering the reachable par 5 16th. O'Reilly looked unshakable as he's narrowly missed his putt for three and left himself with a tap in birdie. Arnaldi, needing to make something happen to catch up, left himself a little more than he would have liked for birdie. After 53 holes of outstanding competitive golf, it would come down to the final hole of the tournament. With the wind howling, the par 4 18th was easily reachable and it set the stage for these two gladiators to fight it out to the death. O'Reilly and the penultimate group played the hole first while Arnaldi was anxiously waiting from behind. O'Reilly's tee shot caught some wind but steered clear of all the hazards and left him short right on the green. His putt from the fringe came up short and the pressure was on as he knew a par would most certainly cost him the tournament. He would have to wait to sink that putt as the final group was called up to hit their tee shots which is customary on drivable par fours. The crowd and O'Reilly stood in angst as Arnaldi was preparing to his hit his tee shot. His tee shot was pulled and found its home in the middle of the lake. It was all but over if O'Reilly could convert his birdie. His putt would find the cup and earn O'Reilly his maiden IGT race to Q School victory. I'm excited. It's the first one on the IGT tour. I mean, I've been in the hunt a few times, just haven't been able to finish it off, and I'm glad that I managed to do it today. Thank you for the host for a wonderful event this week. We caught up with the general manager of the Pro Squad, Andre Lowe, to tell us a little bit about themselves. The Pro Squad is a three year program that we run uh, through the IGT tour or we build it around the IGT Tour, uh, utilizing the IGT as a platform for the students to play tournament golf on, uh, where they can develop the skills to ultimately become tour players. The low round of the tournament still belonged to Brian Andrew with a 66 in the second round. Unfortunately, couldn't finish his off and finishes at a one over par. Moving a little bit up, Melissa Eaton with a wonderful 73 one over par title for the tournament. Peter Kruger of the GFG Academy featuring once again after the wonderful room at Reitzach. Terence Boardman contended last week in showing some promise for the events coming up. The top of the leaderboard still belongs to O'Reilly, who we should see contend in the next couple of events. See us next week, Wingate. Be there.